Hello everyone, good uh, afternoon. Hope you all are doing great. So welcome to the session, uh, Meet the Global Leader, which is organized by School of Entrepreneurship Development. It's a non-profit organization based in Bangladesh. So the objective of this webinar is to share the journey of a professional uh, from different countries to know how they did things, how, they, how did they start their career, how was the university life, to give an idea and insight among the students of Bangladesh how people and from different professions um, start their career and how did they come through. So, so the, today we have invited uh, Nina Yao. She is basically uh, a passionate and experienced professional with a rich background in both consumer brands, marketing and B2C e-commerce. She is currently working as marketing director in Laho Private Limited. So Nina, welcome to our session. Hi, Mohab. Thank you very much for the introduction. It is my great honor to be here. And hi, everyone in, in front of the screen. A very nice e meeting you and hope you're having a good day and getting interesting and useful insights from this time with us together. Yeah, great. So yeah, can you uh, a little bit uh, share about yourself? Yes, absolutely. So um, I'm a Chinese. I initially coming from China. Um, and I studied in a couple of countries, including Shang, uh, Shanghai in China, Tokyo in Japan, and Sydney in Australia. So after graduation, I went back to China and joined the workplace. So I started as a uh, assistant brand manager in the FMCG industries. So I work with cosmetics, makeups, and I'm doing marketing and sales. So later, as digital, uh, digital industry grows quite big in China, I tapped into this area and add into my skill set also e-commerce and the digital marketing uh, experience and skill set. And two years ago, I moved from um, oh yes, still here. <laughs> two years ago, I moved from Shanghai to Singapore. So now currently, I'm living in Singapore uh, and uh, still working in this area of marketing and digital uh, e-commerce for the Southeast Asia market. Great. And um, can you share about uh, you, uh, your university life, how it was as mm. you studied, you know, like in Japan, Australia. So, you know, yeah. like uh, you, you have experience with uh, mixing with so many uh, mm. students, friends yeah. from different countries. So yeah. how's your university life and some activities would you, yeah. uh, you would like to share through mm. which you uh, develop some skills mm. Mm. when you were a student? Absolutely. I think uh, during my university days, um, I went through a mind shift change in my early years. So when I just started, uh, I have been focusing a lot on studying the courses and what the curricula has to provide, which is great. But I think as it goes on in my second and third year, I realized activities and other opportunities that the university can provide, other resources, are as important, if not more, than the curriculums themselves. So for example, uh, besides my curriculums, I've been doing internships. Um, especially in China, a lot of the companies and corp corporates provide such opportunities that collaborates with universities where they'll take students to um, take into their office and assign simple tasks for us and also assign like mentors or senior people's office profess professor professionals to guide us how to do the work. So I did that in three different companies during my years in university, which is very, very helpful in shaping my early years and bring me, uh, kind of bridge me into the professional world. So that is one. And other activities I did is I did quite a lot of students' activities, such as um, I was engaged in school newspapers. Um, so that was more a bit related to my major, but I would just wanting to try how the potential career would be like as a journalism. So I tap into that um, and uh, also organize a few other students' activities, which will also be helpful in a future career. So yeah, I think all sorts of these activities um, are helpful, I would say, yeah. <laughs> so uh, did you involve with these activities um, out of your passion or what was your motivation to, you know, like apart from study, uh, you know, like mm. involved with this kind of activities? Mm. Um, some are out of passion, for example, organizing students' uh, events with a group of people that there are certain um, events that we, uh, I'm passionate about, like, for example, organizing um, expect students gathering or um, hang out or just meet up, sort of making friends with people, this kind of thing. 
um, some other activities like the internship is more to prepare for my future career. So it's like um, we would have uh, ideas or imaginations what kind of future industries or careers that uh, I would like to get into. But to get a more concrete, practical idea how it is like the life is, these experience would provide more um, practical information and really see how it would like. So for those, I'm more I would pick the companies that I feel I'm interested in or the kind of roles that say marketing or sales that I I would like to try in my future, then get a better sense about it. So definitely, that's a, even like sometimes it is very important for students so when they are uh, studying in at university mm -hmm. that uh, what they want to do in future they have to have the visualization and they have yes. to think about it. Yes. And keeping that in mind, they should you know engage themselves with different activities apart from Absolutely. the study to explore more and equip, them, equip themselves with uh, so many experiences and skills. Yes. And uh, then after university. Uh, after gradu after graduation so how did your career start how did i how did my career start so um my first career is um so i i firstly know which rough area i would like to get into so what would be something related to consumer fmcg kind of thing so as a fresh grad you would just send out lots of resumes and uh, I went into the first company that offered me an offer. So it's a consultant company that does market research. And so it does market research in the makeup industry. So that's where actually I started my first eight years of, uh, no, first five years of work in this makeup, um, uh, makeup industry. Um, yeah, <laughs> that's how yeah, I started, and, I think. And when did you start? Uh, were there any... Uh, differences um, were, with the topic uh, with, the, with the topic that you studied or hmm. the subjects you studied in your university but in practical life you 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 found something different hmm. where, where uh, there was were there any gap or was there any gap regarding this hmm. that's a very good, good question we have so I think um, I generally think there might be a difference for students who study very technical majors professions so for example the um, programmers or like uh let's say lawyers doctors right these probably it's not quite in my arena to address how, uh, how how would be the difference between what they're learning and what be utilizing a professional but i can address for students who learn social science so which is my arena like whichever um major they're learning in this whole category of social science may it be my major is communication or journalism or can be sociology or whichever so all these i think um when we enter into the career right actually the option is very very large there are many things you can do and what's important is more important i would say is your soft skills which is like your people skills your communication your collaborations these um, so you probably learn a bit in your school as well, but it's more, um, you get more um, in the practical life. It's so-called learn it as you do it. So that's, go back to your previous question, which I thought was very good. You asked about activities you do at school. So I think, I think these activities, um, the exposures will just help you cultivate these soft skills that helps you get into your career. Yeah. Definitely. And hmm. so, uh, from business analyst, you uh, moved uh, as uh, like in another company in a hmm. multinational company as yes. assistant brand manager. Yes. So you know, like uh, from how was it like from uh, being an analyst to hmm. uh, to be a brand assistant brand manager, and hmm. how was this shaped and how was your experience? And hmm. uh, secondly, how uh, what was hmm. or what were you? tasks uh, or role as an assistant brand manager and what did you learn mm. uh, working here? Mm. Good question. Um, I think one biggest difference is about making decisions, making business decisions. So as a business analyst, you just collect information and try to interpret these informations. You are more like a counselor or advisor, uh, but you don't make decisions, right? You tell, you try to give as much a big picture as you can to the decision maker which is the brand manager or whoever which we are working for yep. now once my role shifted 
to be as an assistant brand manager or brand manager, then I become the person that um, may, need to make decisions. So what I did before, uh, collecting information about the market and consumer becomes very important for me to collect enough information to make well-informed decisions. But the new skill set I need to learn is absolutely making decisions. Um, so evaluating pros and cons and knowing my target and know um, what to do with them. Yeah, so that's the biggest difference, I would say. And I think a skill that I keep learning today, uh, I think I'll probably <laughs> continue to learn throughout my career journey. Great. Mm. And uh, then you also shift to another um, Hmm. Company, which is uh, a different company than uh, the FMCG yeah. company, it's a different FMCG company, right? Yeah, a different FMCG company, just a different company, yeah. but quite similar roles. Yeah. So uh, your activities were kind of similar from yeah. in both of those uh, activities. So. Yes, but the second role adds so, in a bit more digital elements with you know the trend okay. trend of the times. Great. So how how do you define like if anyone uh, wants like sometimes you know in some countries um uh, their their entry to be in brand profession is uh, sometimes difficult because sometimes some organizations they want you know like uh, people who has experience uh, in sales mm. in maybe agency working with agency marketing agency mm. so if anyone wants to explore in the sector mm. of brand in mm. this time so what what do you suggest uh, to them uh, for the students if they want to explore their career in brand what they should uh, have is skills wise and knowledge wise that's a very good question <laughs> um Thank you. yeah i i think um i still think firstly soft skill is important um, people skill because it involves a lot of interactions with people and uh, in a brand sector like marketing and sales you engage with people you try to understand the people so that is important and um, second I think is the ability to keep learning so in the brand sector as the market change the business changes um, I think the, the ability to adapt to these changes and keep equipping yourself to be up to the date is very important. That is something I would like to share with uh, our students as well. So it's not like you graduated and you've done your study, but maybe it's just the start of your <laughs> lifelong learning. Yes, Mohab, I think that's all I would like to share about this question. Great. Uh, thank you. I mean, um, this is really important, like the perspective and the role and task mm -hmm. they have to complete and they have to do. They should have the idea and they have they should develop themselves or skill wise or information wise like that. So yeah. you, your career journey is very impressive and a long journey. So can you share the uh, importance of having a mentor oh. you know, like to, to in, in career to yes. take decision you know, sometimes? So according to do you have any mentor and yeah. the importance of having mm. a mentor mm. in mm. professional career mm, good question good question yes uh, i personally i have my mentor and i am also mentoring some chinese stu uh, some students in china also university students so i think this is very very um there's a very helpful um, part if we could the students you could access uh, have resources to that or um, you just be intentional and uh, try to look out people around you that you admire and try to ask them for mentorships and advices. So I think it's important is that they provide a more matured perspectives. So uh, as we uh, as we you know progress or growing up, we are facing different challenges and issues. Sometimes our own perspectives can be stuck or we just can't see a solution out. Then at that time, if you we get some guidance or different perspectives, that will be really enlightening and refreshing. So that is a very helpful um, thing that we can have. Yeah. Uh, do you, uh, when do you, when you um, selected your mentor, 
mm. what, what the criteria is so what mm. uh, before selecting a mentor uh, you know, mm. like what should um, professional or students think regarding mm. that whom they can select as a mm. mentor can you suggest mm -hmm. one or two point mm. e so from my personal perspective there could be two different mentors one is that the people you work with so i've been extremely lucky that in my previous organizations my leaders my managers who also act as my mentors so these people i work very closely with so i will be observing them how they handle things how they solve problems how they interact with people uh, so you just so uh, so these people cuz you interact more for me it's more um like observation and learn from from my my side it will be less kind of formality would be less like uh, okay we have a uh, you know dedicated time to just talk about mentorship yes we definitely can but i would say if you we are blessed lucky to have some people working together that can also be a mentor that will be great and you can learn more then we also have the second type of mentor which is currently i am engaging in so it's would be um people outside of our organization so it could be a third party people from other companies so these people it, you interact less so because you don't work together you are not seeing each other day to day so these are more like a knowledge pond or knowledge base where they restore a lot of the experience these people will be more we meet up frequently on a schedule like we can meet up once a month or whatever frequencies both of us find time with um and with these mentors i would do more preparations like more intentionally prepare my questions so that with the good questions they can give you good answers and guidance so with these mentors i would really you know reflect on myself what are the challenges i'm facing uh, what are the issues or what are the objectives so these are more mindful and intentional needs more preparations compared to the previous type and yeah so we'll just have you know in our coffee chat you ask meaningful questions and you get meaningful guidance yeah wonderful yeah wonderful <laughs> we should we should get this there in bangladesh then also you know like uh, then you uh, moved to working for unilever which is you know yeah. like uh, so many graduates want to work for unilever in bangladesh mm. and mm. other two or three organizations so uh how was it i mean uh it's it, they have a lot of brands mm. uh, it's a big company so how was your work there and what mm. what what the <coughs> specific skills or things that you learned working for you mm. mm. i think so far unilever has been an experience that shaped me greatly um as an global organization i really admire and appreciate their corporate culture so that how they shape shape leaderships so um probably you also heard of or many of the students in bangladesh were heard of of uh, unilever's compass so they will have yeah. values uh, guide us how to do business especially because i'm in a front row like i'm a sales and marketing right it's really at the front line of the business so these values will really you know shape us what kind of businessman we would like to do be what kind of people we would like to be so I, i think these are great things of this company definitely uh besides all these uh you know technical trainings that they can uh, provide you or the people that you can learn from so that is one and definitely very great and also you know you know it's also like a university i would say so we enter that as a lot of studies they have a lot of trainings on different uh, skills new market knowledge whatever so it's been great and you will make a lot of peers that's also excellent outstanding um and yeah i think it would be great if we get the opportunity to get into such a great organization in our early stage of the career great wonderful and uh, the thing is if, uh, later you work as a regional head mm. uh, at Taraj. so how was it you know like uh, it was uh, like you were transforming to to a bigger role and lots of responsibilities so how was your experience because then it's a, a e-commerce uh, business um, so from you know like uh, fmcg to e-commerce how was your uh, what what did you actually do being a regional head and uh, what were the specific or technical skills 
if anyone wants to be the you know like the head of a region or regional manager something like that so it's because you know like more responsibilities more commitments so how was your experience working for uh, being mm. a regional there's definitely transition um so it's so firstly from a local role right, i'm lo managing china market then move to original role the biggest difference is in understanding the responsibilities this role play so i think the biggest difference is as a local role we make a lot of business decisions we are the person on the ground who execute and see the result immediately but the original role is more like a consolidate and provide uh, guidance or provide directions so it's more a high up level where you might see less details but um you will be i will be required to understand the big picture more so the ability to understand what each market is doing on a you, you just capture the important information like you wouldn't be able to get all the details as if you were working on a local role um so yeah that information collecting ability after that is <laughs> analysis and consulting con uh, consolidating and from there you will be the one that guiding the local market on the big directions that this is the next step you should do this is the kpi so this is the report you should do so i think you provide a lot of guidance suggestions and of course a lot needs to access a lot of influencing skills where you try to influence the local market to take your suggestions and guidance because they don't have to <laughs> most of the time so that is i think the biggest difference from a regional role to a local role great so uh, sometimes you know like i know like sales job i work mm. in sales um, sometimes graduates or students they don't like it so what do you think like uh, how uh, experience or uh, having sales skills uh, can shape uh, or building a career good career uh, whatever it is is like marketing branding but having a sales uh, experience or sales skills uh, can mm. shape mm. anyone's career so what do you see um, the experience of sales uh, for a good career growth mm. I think it's very important, very helpful. Uh, sales can be anything. So it can be sell uh, tangible products, can be sell yourself, like in a career market. <laughs> uh, I think it ultimately sells to me personally. It's about understanding people's need and see if you can help them address their needs in a way that is win-win to both ends. So that to me is a good sales person. <laughs> it's not just like, you know, forcing some people to buy something yep. for your profitability. So if we can reach to that stage as a good sales person, I trust whatever your KPIs and numbers will be reached and it will be sustainable. Um, and how to reach to that ideal stage is a lifelong learning, I believe. <laughs> In this lifelong learning, we will learn a lot of the skills like communication skills, how to talking to people, how to express yourself, how to stand on your ground and how to also be flexible and you know catering both sides needs um so um carrying these soft skills or overall um capabilities that will definitely i think help you go very long into your career whatever you will be doing great and uh, uh, if, if you have a role model you know like, mm. if, if you just share yeah. yeah um i quite admire my previous leaders in unilever um so he has been a really good businessman to me um you know and have all these qualities uh that i just mentioned um you know, very good decision making very sharp uh a good leader and he also caring and mentoring for people, not just, you know, get the things done, but he really grow his people. So, yeah, that's a role model that I've been looking at and hope to be myself. <laughs> Great. And uh, you know Japanese? I know Japanese, yes, I do. And what, what motivated you to learn this language and how it is helping you? <laughs> <laughs> it's actually a side product because uh, I was studying Japan but I studied in English in Japan in a 
international faculty. <laughs> so learning Japanese is just a byproduct of the year that I was there. And, you know, things, sometimes it's very interesting that my intention wasn't really to learn, you know, to get learn Japanese to a certain extent. Uh, I'm more, I engage in a lot of extracurricular activities. So I was in a speech context, even though my Japanese is pretty broken, <laughs> but fine, never mind. It's more the process that, um, you know, passionates me. So you get to interact with a lot of Japanese students. They help you, help me refine my Japanese skills. Uh, and I involved in, you know, different just things mingle with Japanese students. So as a, I didn't really intentionally spend a lot of time studying my Japanese. I did, you know, do the basic jobs, learning the vocabulary sort of thing. But, um, but a lot of the progress and achievement there is actually during the process of doing the things that I'm passionate about. <laughs> I think it can also be um, kind of some lessons for other aspects of life as well. When you enjoy the process, the goal will justify or the reward will come itself. <laughs> Fair. It's a good, it's a very good skill, you know, like <laughs> in the skills, language, you know, yeah. topic of study. So uh, uh, what do you currently do uh, about your work, about your mm. About your work or role, if you share that, what you are currently doing. Oh, what my current role and works is, is that, oh, is that the question? Yeah. Uh, so currently as a marketing director, I have two major roles. One is um, doing business development in uh, mainly in wholesale sector and in event catering sectors. So we do provide this service. So we have this product very Delightful, simple product, gelato. <laughs> and um, so I'm uh, I'm responsible for finding customers that, business customers that um, would need our supply of the gelato. So it could be cafes, other ice cream shops who does not have the capability to produce the product themselves. Hotels, lots of kind of these, right? That's one. So business development and then the other is we provide event catering so you just find opportunities where your service will be add value to that event and yeah and then also i managed all the digital uh, part of the business including all the digital marketings on social media websites and also the e-commerce part which you know um Singapore, I think, pr pretty similar to Bangladesh. We have the marketplace, we have Food Panda, or these uh, e-commerce channels that direct facing consumers, which is also um, part of the business that I am managing and growing. Yeah. Great. And um, how do you see? I mean, the way you mentioned that you are mm. two roles. So, how do you see uh, your work? Maybe not your current work or other activities like uh, your mentoring activities. How do you see, uh, or if you can share, the way you create an impact in the community, mm. maybe where you are staying now or in other communities? Mm. How do you see uh, through your activities, maybe your work or maybe your activities apart from work? Mm. I think now one thing I'm quite passionate about the creating impact is actually quite similar to what you're doing. And then the reason, the main motivations why I am here and then sharing my stories with you is uh, hoping my experience can also be some, uh, you know, uh, inspirations to younger people. Yeah. So um, because I've searched the career journey, you know, coming from all these big corporates, companies, going into the digital, which is the trend, now entering into entrepreneurship, which is a, uh, brave move <laughs> this year. So all these journeys and thoughts and learnings and thinkings behind, um, if they can be some um, help to the for the younger generations to come, and um, I would be quite happy if that helps them, yeah. Definitely, definitely. It really helps because, you know, when people see uh, the journey of a person, how they mm -hmm. have become the person yeah. they're right now or the, yeah. uh, how they have reached to their yeah. uh, destination or their position it's important mm -hmm. to know the background and that yeah. actually gives them an idea like most of the times so we learn it from books learning yeah. stories and biography it's very important and maybe you know like as you have uh or as you work with uh, 
diversified people hmm. and team also. So can you share like whenever you are in uh, you know some kinds of argument in team or difficult situation or sometimes which is maybe out of out of your control or out of team's control. Yeah. Uh, sometimes this argumentary situation. Yeah. Uh, what, what do you think what people should do or what mm. you did or what you mm. did to mm. like calm down the situation? Good question. This is actually also one of the important skills I learned in Unilever, which I'm still very grateful to that. <laughs> so in comes especially in a work context, people could have different perspectives and might come to disagreement. At that time, one important thing I learned to remember and try to remind the team as well is what is our common goal and objectives. Um, so we will try to, I'll try to help us align on this big goal first, then so at least find a common ground for everybody that there's one common cause that we are all working towards. Well, how do we reach this cost and what's the method that we should use? We can disagree about, we can argue, and uh, we can you know, explain and discuss about, but we can just find one common ground that, so, that helps solve a lot of the conflicts already. Then that also um, brings, opens a door you know, for conversations and it's more easier for the different parties to come and talk more rationally and with a more peaceful heart just to discuss the differences with the commonalities so that has been very grateful um very helpful in many of the conflicts i find in my past career experience yeah wonderful mm. so uh you know like what would you suggest <clears throat> for mm. uh, uh, to students who are mm. currently in university so mm. can you give some advice on how they should prepare themselves uh, before graduation skills wise and also, if I say, uh, information-wise as well. Say, for example, mm. yeah. In can you uh, share in two perspectives? Uh, in terms of two perspectives, one is uh, a general for all, uh, general idea for all, uh, how they should develop themselves uh, for the you know like um, uh, their their professional or they should how how they should make themselves future ready mm. and. Uh, you know, like uh, if anyone wants to explore their career in marketing, mm. so how they should uh, prepare for you know, mm. as the as the technology based one there. So, in mm. these two perspectives, if you share, mm. good question, good question. Um, so I, I really love this vocabulary, this word you use, future ready. <laughs> I think we uh, it's a good time. Um. Recently, a very, very popular hot words I think everybody is talking about is AI. And that has a very, very big impact, I think, especially on the marketing role. Um, technology's impact on marketing, um, advertising kind of thing. So uh, to be future ready, I think, uh, in terms of, you know, uh, capabilities, information wise, um, definitely keep an eye open to the market, be very sensitive to the latest trend. So I think, um, so future ready, um, one quality that I, I, I would like to mention is curiosity. Um, be curious about information, uh, be sensitive, be updated, and be open to learning all these new things. So um, it's, as I mentioned, it wouldn't be like, oh, I graduated from university, maybe a very good university. I complete in my courses, done. I'm ready just to work. <laughs> so I think future will not be like this. So be keep new things. You will keep just being a student. And for example, now who I am now, and maybe a lot of the fresh grads have more knowledge, more technologies than I do. They are more equipped. Um, so then I would need to have this um, humbleness, humility to learn from them. Um, you know, leverage, always leveraging each other's strength and together helps to get a business done in the most efficient way. That is something I think this new era, which changes faster than ever, um, a good future ready person, some skills I would like to re recommend. <laughs> Uh, and in terms of marketing specifically, I think beyond all these technologies skills, the core foundation would still be there. I would say understanding people, 
and um, addressing people's needs, that kind of insights and people-oriented is so important. Great. Thank you so much. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a wonderful thing uh, that you mentioned. It's, uh, it's most of the qualities, actually, uh, as a human being, we all should have, we all should develop. Yes. So this is a very thing on common sense. And all through your um, uh, uh, journeys that you have learned and you have shared um, in brief with us today is actually it's out there. Students, they should you know, ex explore, they should read more, they should explore more. And, you know, like in today's world, it is not limited within the boundary of their own country. They can explore, you know, like the global career. So mm, this is the yep. thing and they should expand their mindset so yeah. uh you know thank you so much uh we're uh, at the end of our session almost and through your journey we believe that uh, people who are watching and who are who are going to watch they will actually learn about you know like uh, the, the transition or the journey of your uh, marketing career and your your mindsets and the way you learn some things and the way you think it is going to definitely help them uh, as an insight and as a, a knowledge sharing session. Uh, so thank you so much and uh, wish you very best of luck that you keep exploring, you know, like new opportunities and new responsibilities. Mm. Uh, yeah. Thank you very much, Mahab. Thank you so much for providing this stage and everybody's time. Really appreciate that. Great. Thank you so much and have a good day. You too. Bye-bye.